So good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the virtual bridge session number 28. Today we have Svetlana um, talking about teaching AutoCAD face-to-face um, -to, -face to remote in three easy-ish steps. <laughs> Thank you very much, and James. Um, so, um, good afternoon, good, uh, sorry, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Svetlana. I am an um, engineering lecturer at Glasgow Clyde College. Um, I teach um, statics, dynamics, um, engineering principles, and AutoCAD. Um, I'm originally from Russia, so that's why you hear my accent. <laughs> so, I'm going to share my screen with you just now to start uh, my presentation. Okay. And I'm going to start it from the beginning. Right. So, guys, I'm just going to tell you straight away that this is uh, based on my um, personal experience. And uh, I want to share with you some tips and techniques that I'm using to um, uh, basically to teach AutoCAD uh, from home. And um, I'm sure um, there are some more wonderful techniques to teach AutoCAD, but this is just based on my experience and um, it's helped me and it's working for me and um, uh, hopefully it, you find it um, helpful as well. So before I dive in into the techniques, I um, want to uh, briefly cover and tell you what, um, what is AutoCAD because maybe some of you don't know. So AutoCAD is a computer-aided design and drafting software. Um, when you hear uh, um, CAD software, you probably think, oh, it's all about engineering, it's used in engineering. And this is correct. Um, so to name a few fields of engineering where we can use CAD as electrical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering. So you can create projects like that. You can create, um, basically you can create drawings using a computer. Uh, we don't use paper and pens and erasers anymore. Thanks goodness. We use uh, computers to create drawings and it's much easier and it's um, much quicker. So we can create things like this and um, drawings, more complicated drawings, simple drawings, exploded view um, drawings. So you can see how components joined together and you can have the like 3D version of the component, how it's going to look like uh, before it's even been manufactured. So um, apart from engineering, um, it's actually, uh, we, CAD can be used in virtually any industry you can think of. So um, looking at uh, some of the industries, so uh, game and design development industry. So you, you know you all played computer games or you watched your kids playing computer games and you all know how realistic the games look uh, just now. So it all uh, basically started in CAD and uh, they created images and implemented the images into games. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, CAD, um, had developed different packages for different, to suit different industries. Um, CAD used widely in medical industry, in architecture, fashion, dis the jewelry design, film and television production. So this is just a handful of industries uh, where CAD can be used. And I'm really passionate about CAD. I, uh, I really like teaching CAD and um, um, and as you can imagine, any software, uh, you actually, it's easier to teach in class. Students actually have to come to the physical classroom and um, do the practical exercises um, using software on their computers. And it's much easier to um, teach face-to-face. -face. Nothing can replace that. However, when I was faced with the lockdown situation, I started panicking because majority of my classes, card classes, and I'm thinking, okay, what, what am I going to do? How am I going to deliver um, information to my students? So um, um, I've done some research, I've talked to people, um, and well, not many people can give me advice because nobody was faced with this situation before. So I want to tell you guys, first of all, what I've done before, before we finished um, uh, College for Lockdown. So I decided to go last day, I had one day to prepare everything. So I uh, decided I need to meet with all my groups. I have eight groups. I teach eight groups uh, during this um, phase. So I, um, I had to find um, my groups um, uh, in the college. Uh, thankfully, I, I managed to find most of them and I talked to them. 
Um, first of all, I collected the uh, email addresses to keep uh, communication with my students, just in case if uh, college system is not up to date and I've, uh, I didn't want to lose anyone. And I made sure that they got my email address as well. Uh, then I asked my students, I said, guys, well, I see, it seems like we're going to be um, teaching learning from home. So what platform do you think we should use? Have you ever had any experiences in that? And they, most of them, they suggested um, um, Google Classroom. They said, we used that before, it worked. Some of them um, used um, Google Classroom at school and they actually showed me how it worked. I, I had no idea about Google Classroom before how to use it so they did show me how it works we created accounts we created our organized uh, classes and added some of my students already on the first day to my uh, google classrooms so um we started from there and then i told them each of my group i said okay guys this is what we're going to do i'm going to send you an email with instructions please keep an eye on your email box and um i'll tell you how to load card to your computer and then we'll take it from there so this is uh, this I think this preparation helped me um, quite a lot so um, um, I, I would like to um, I'll let you know um, um, that some essentials you need to have in order to teach card from home for your students and for yourselves so um, you have to have a computer with the right spec and your computers uh, and your students of course um, as well um, so this is the first problem I came across uh, because students were emailing me and saying, oh, Svetlana, I don't have a computer, I don't have a laptop at home, or my computer is not strong enough to run CAD software. And they um, send me lots of emails with technical questions, which I was struggling to um, answer. I had to do some research, I had to speak to uh, people, I had to speak to students, and this is just all kind of technical stuff that I was struggling to help them. However, uh, with uh, college help, with our IT help, IT uh, team help, I managed to, to go through these difficulties. And, and I'm re really thankful to college uh, for organizing, for funding um, some laptops. So college provided some laptops to students um, um, to work at home. So uh, computers were delivered to students' houses and they, they were um, able to work from home. Uh, some of them are still in waiting list, but however, most of my students are um, progressing well and doing CAD from home. So the next thing you need to have is CAD software. CAD software can be um, downloaded from Autodesk community uh, because uh, students learning card at college, they have the college um, email address and um, um, Autodesk providing free license for one year for each student. So it's, it's, it's student software, student card software, but they can still um, use it and they can still uh, do the exercises. Um, and again, uh, they came up with lots of different questions. Plan why uh, my computer is not working? Why uh, I can't download this software? Why are they so slow? I can't use it. So again, lots of technical questions that I would be struggling to um, to actually to um, tell them uh, the um, answer. And uh, again, I had to go to IT support, I had to go to Autodesk community, ask them the questions. And it uh, would be so much easier if I was there with them and I could um, help them, but well, um, considering the situation. Um, so um, another thing I would advise for you to have, uh, it's good relationships with your IT team, um, with your IT support team at college. Um, because you, uh, students, as I already said, uh, students asking a lot of questions about uh, technical stuff and you need somebody with uh, IT background to help. So after this phase finished, we finally established uh, um, laptops and cards. So then um, we progressed with, the start, with, um, with learning and teaching. So the three things that helped me, um, it was, um, there was uh, Google Classroom, Loom and Zoom. So you need to have Google Classroom, obviously, uh, and it's easy it's to use. It's free as long as you've got Gmail account, you can use Google Classroom. Uh, Loom I use uh, to record videos um, for my students. So Loom is another application, it's free, and um, it allows you to record your screen and your voice or the background. And then obviously you need to have Zoom to, um, to perform the lessons to communicate with your students. So, um, let's uh, talk about Google Classroom very quickly. So um, 
I use Google Classroom to com communicate with my students, to submit learning materials there, to create assignments for them, uh, to submit some troubleshooting videos that I created in Loom, and to receive tutorials, so, uh, reports, um, assessment drawings from students. So I'm going to just um, stop my presentation right there, and I'm going to show you uh, the um, Google Classroom I created. So. Uh, you can see this, these are my groups and two groups I just uh, created for uh, students who are catching up with the, from the last phase. So these uh, eight groups, uh, basically my students for this phase. You can see that um, some of the groups, they've got different names like Young Team, Cut Titans, Svetlana's Dream Team. So this is the students came up with uh, their names for their groups. So we had a little bit of fun with that. And uh, the rest of them are just, um, uh, just uh, named um, by the subject. So Cut Level 5 group, for example, Cut Level 6 group. And I also um, um, know what time and when I'm teaching them. So Monday morning, Monday, Thursday afternoon. So this group actually, in fact, um, uh, for this group, I'm teaching two units, ITAS and CART at the same time. So I created two classes for them, but we found it easier actually to just keep one class for to cover two subjects. So that's why I don't have any students in here. All right, so let's have a look, for example, CART Titans. So um, <clears throat> when you open uh, this um, class, you can you present it with a page, uh, with a stream page, where you can post your comments, where you can post, uh, communicate with students, and they can uh, communicate uh, with myself as well. So they, they um, post some comments here as well. So, um, and um, you may notice here that I always copy and paste Zoom link for meeting that are, I organize for my students. Um, so uh, they, it's easier for them to access. Um, then if you go to classwork, this is a place where you can submit all your um, materials, your work, your assessments. So if you click create and then if you go to materials, you can um, uh, title your material, your create topic, and you can uh, attach any videos, any presentations or, or um, uh, Microsoft uh, Word documents uh, to help you, um, um, you know, to carry on this um, learning process. So also you can create assignments. This is what I like about this um, um, software as well. So um, for example, you can create assignment and you can um, create a due date as well. So uh, if for example, I, I um, create um, assignment for students or if I ask them to um, do their tutorial by a certain date, and I said the date, they will receive notification about two, three days, I think, uh, to remind them they have um, a tutorial to submit, so it's no way they're going to forget about it. And uh, they also can submit card drawings here as well, and I look at them and um, um, I feedback. Um, also, let's have a look, I'm going to show you this young team and if I go to classwork and we just done the fluid problems, it's uh, HN uh, statics group, um, on, oh no, it's engineering principles actually, sorry. So I created assignments for them, so the tutorial um, should be due by uh, May 19 and 16 people should submit tutorials and only two already done um, the tutorial. So, Good students, <laughs> right? And I can see, I can see if I click here, I can see uh, the tutorial submitted, and I can comment on them. So this is this is about um, Google Classroom. So if I'm going back to uh, share my presentation again, just, can you see it now? On. That's it. Come up now, um, Lana. There's okay. just a couple of questions that have come in around it. So um, Jamie's asking. Um, did you choose Google Classrooms due to shortfalls in the college VLE? If so, what were the shortfalls? No, college VLE, actually, we're still using college VLE. Um, it just, I wanted to um, kind of tool that to communicate with students, uh, the easier tool to communicate with students. And uh, because Google Classroom, you can actually uh, load up to your phone. And every time I post something uh, on Google Classroom, they will receive the notification about that. And we still use VLE. I still submit all the uh, my presentations and um, uh, work on VLE. So they kind of have um, we've got like a two platforms. Uh, but um, Google Classroom, I like it because it's more kind of interactive and it's easier to um, communicate with students. Yep. Any more questions so far? 
There's another one from Alison, um, but we'll pick that one up at the end. Um, okay. Okay, so um, Loom, a few words about Loom. Loom, I uh, find it uh, quite easy to use. I can record my um, demonstration. If I demonstrate something using CAD and um, um, like drawing, I uh, will record some comp complicated exercises that I would think students will struggle. And then I post this Loom recordings to Google Classroom. Then uh, um, when they ask me questions, uh, card questions, it's uh, easier to show rather than to explain via emails. So I would just record my answer. I would show them on the screen and then send it uh, to um, them um, using Google Classroom. And Google Classroom, you can actually communicate with um, the full group or with some um, students privately. And I also use it to record my um, lessons, like for example, for HN Statics, my presentation. Uh, the word of warning here, uh, don't try to record 45 minutes presentation. I've tried that and um, it um, actually it was very painful because Loom stopped recording um, like after 10 minutes uh, a few times and I didn't know this and it was no notification the recording was stopped and I just, just I was talking to myself for another 30 minutes and then it was a disappointed, uh, disappointment. So what I, I uh, what solution I came uh, came up with I uh, would break the um, presentation into uh, 10, 15 minutes videos and then just uh, record them. And it's easier for you to do it and it's easier for students to uh, listen and uh, to um, watch the video if it's a bit um, um, smaller. Okay, and this brings us to Zoom. So Zoom, um, I use to um, arrange meetings with students and basically kind of perform um, lessons on, online. So I will organize Zoom meetings in about two, three, four days in advance so I can plan ahead my week and students as well. And uh, also when you, you know yourself, if you organize Zoom meetings, you are emailing students uh, the Zoom link so they receive the email with, with your link. Then I copy and paste that link into the Google Classroom. And the 10 minutes before Zoom meeting, they also receive notification about this meeting. So they kind of reminded three times. So again, it's a slim chance that they're not gonna attend. And um, so first, what's actually happening during my Zoom meetings? First of all, um, 10 minutes, I'll give them to just to, um, um, to do an informal chat and uh, to wait for students to join in and um, so we uh, i would ask them how are they doing what productive things they've done what happened and they would share me with me some stories i would say something like oh guys listen i was nominated uh, today to do 5k walk so that's what i started to do and we laugh we we joke about uh, things like that and this would put them in kind of friendly motivating mood so they would be like okay so we're here to have fun and let's do some work and uh, yeah so uh, kind of lifted mood then I would do my register I've got all my students um, actually uh, printed all my groups uh, and, and students printed on the um, A4 um, sheets and I would just um, um, basically do the normal register uh, date and um, take the, the name. Uh, then I will ask um, students about uh, their progress. I will put each student on a spotlight and I will ask them how are they doing? What is your progress? Have you loaded cards? Have you managed to um, to um, um, to start your first assessment? Have you managed to finish all exercises? Um, and I will write it down um, in my register. So kind of briefly, okay, loaded card, start assessment one. So this gives me the indication what they've done, where they are, and I know it for the next week, um, and I'm, I'm gonna ask, okay, so have you finished this? So it kind of um, uh, progressing from, from that. And then I will tell them what we're gonna do um, during this lesson, and th then I will share my screen and go over the material. When I'm going over the material, when I'm sharing the screen with them and talking through the drawings, or if I'm teaching statics, if we're doing the calculations, I'll, I make them to, to take notes because um, it keeps them concentrated on the screen. I always uh, um, em emphasize, guys, can you please take notes and uh, um, unless you, you, you're you going to miss something. Um, and um, um, so 
Um, after that, I will allow them to ask uh, questions. I will answer their questions. So I will allow them to share their screen and show me a specific um, a place where they actually struggling with their drawings. And then I'll share my screen and show them how to fix it. So this, been, this has been working well and I'm very happy with that. Um, then I will give them a, basically a, their um, homework and I tell them what I expect them to do um, next uh, by next week. So if again, if I'm um, I'm gonna share with uh, you my uh, other screen. Here we go. Can you see that? Yes. So this is just a card drawing, right? So um, it, when I share my screen like this, and I'll. Um, talk to, through the um, different um, options and drawings that we are doing. So, um, for example, I will always show them what I'm doing and talk through that. So, um, select the line command and just create the line. And I will um, talk through all of the steps that I'm are doing and um, if it's important, if something like this, if they need to create a scale of uh, the uh, specific uh, part of the drawing, again, I will say, guys, this is how it's done, and make notes just uh, step by step what what I'm doing here. And I'm going to go back to my presentation, and I'm going to say a few more words, and I'm going to finish. So I want to say a few words about uh, student concentration. Um, when when you are um, teaching on, online, um, um, it's it's kind of hard to keep a st students' concentration at the highest level because you don't know what they're doing. They can be checking the phone at the same time. They can be talking to someone. They can be. Um, they, they can be just, they can leave and go. So I always encourage them to keep their video on so I, I actually can see their faces. I can see what they're doing. And sometimes I can, I, I would stop and say, hey, Logan, how are you doing? Are you still with us? Um, so what is the answer for this question? And uh, things like that. So they, they, they know I might talk to them. So they pay, so they pay um, attention. And um, when you're doing, when you're teaching through Zoom, remotely it's um it, it's actually i found it's it's actually exhausting uh, because you constantly need to talk you constantly need to um um to have um, your students connected to to keep their concentration at high level so um um it's um, it's it's tiring and my sessions normally last about one hour and a half sometimes one hour sometimes sometimes two hours and a half it depends how much material we have uh, to cover and uh, how many questions they have but you will feel quite tired after that um so um yeah so this is basically uh, <laughs> my tips. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. And uh, as I said, it's uh, only my experience. This works for, for me. And this is how I came up uh, with the, um, you know, um, what, what I can do, how I can deliver the information online. So hope, I hope that it's helpful to someone. And I um, hope you enjoy my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to answer or to ask. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. That was um, very interesting. I've just I've got a, a question um, just out of interest. What's the ratio of male to female students in your classes? Oh, I've got uh, most of uh, the classes. I've got um, male and I would say about ten percent, ten percent girls and ninety percent boys. <laughs> um, no, that's great. It's just just one of those personal ones um yeah. you see it you see it more and more um especially this morning on linkedin there was there was a lot of uh chat about um about women in tech uh through one of the groups that uh that i'm part of so it's just a just one of those interesting questions um mm -hmm. been a couple of questions around about um google classrooms and gmail yeah. uh and the need for for students to have a gmail account etc i think those have been answered um between jamie and kenji um but have you done any any feedback from the students about having to have a separate gmail account or anything um or have they just went with it um 
they kind of just went for the, in the beginning, I uh, created a big long email <laughs> and I sent uh, this email to everyone and I uh, described step by step what they need to do and uh, creating having a Google account, it was one of the steps. Some of them already had the account, some of them they um, just created the account just to use the, 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 the for college. So um, we didn't really have many issues with that and uh, overall experience I think was quite um, um, all right for students because they were um, giving good feedback and saying okay that's thank you right for doing this and uh, um, kind of um, pro progressing with the studies and everything because nobody knew that um, uh, how how are we going to be learning um, from um, home, especially cards? You know, if to, to learn to learn um, Excel, for example, or uh, Microsoft Word, you, you kind of need to be at college. You need to practice in front of the teacher. So I was struggling with this in the beginning, but then then students were fine with it, and it was still still we still uh, lots of difficulties we're going through, and I still receive lots of emails, but. Um, now it's uh, kind of more less settled. I know what I'm doing. Four weeks, the first four weeks was uh, very difficult, but then then it's kind of, uh, now it's better, it's much better. <laughs> um, are you want, are you, I want to ask a question, David? Yeah, uh, Svetlana, hi, David Watson here. I, I, I teach CAD as well. Um, Hello, David, oh, great. So. I can't see you. You've still got your screen up for the. Okay, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need to stop share. Okay. There you Can go. you see me? Yeah, there you go. Um, so I, I teach a lot of the same subjects as you, just looking at your statics and everything else. Um, um, and I'll just, what I'm doing with CAD when I'm delivering it, as I'm also putting out um, on, on the Zoom, I'm then putting out um, a record of that by email on a SharePoint. Are you doing the same? Do you find that quite useful? Because I'm getting mixed responses about guys maybe looking at an hour of Zoom and maybe not being able to go to the point in the 60 minutes that's relevant to them. So I'm okay with it. Are you bothered to send out uh, a record of your delivery after your... After I'm, your not, uh, I'm not recording. I'm not recording actually Zoom sessions. I record uh, just a specific... Um, um, yeah, like questions if they had difficulties with like create like scaling for example i will create specific video for that and uh, i'll send it to them and don't record my uh, zoom sessions uh, just just in case the students don't want to be real because they're going to be um there i suppose and yeah. um and it's going to be long video again to if they're going to go through all the, this video and to watch them watch this video again it's it will be a bit mm, i don't know maybe i should do it i'll i'll try <laughs> I think I do it with, um, I'm getting more demands now as time rolls in for one-to-one -one sessions and three-to-one -one sessions on particular items of CAD and also mm -hmm. statics and dynamics. So I'm recording them, they're maybe 20, 30 minutes. I just did one this morning on okay. dynamics and um, they, they, they really appreciate the, the, the Zoom feed of the, the meeting because there's points in there. They might have went too quickly or too slowly, etc. I think that's a, a good bit of practice to do. Um, another concern I've got really with the remote working, I don't know how you feel, is maybe the update to the software. Um, I know, for example, in UHI, um, who are very well equipped for remote working, as you would imagine, that the um, management team in there can take control of your laptop or your, your PC and update the software remotely. Can they? Yes, they can. Oh, yeah. great. We're well away from that, you know. I want the latest edition of whatever. Um, there's license agreements and, and barriers in there. Um, so I think it's maybe something to take forward back to the colleges when we do go back and that if we have this model and it's going to be fleshed out for everybody, then we need some kind of um, uh, support that is live online to overcome the, the download barriers of oh, yes. rights. Um, which we cannot do. I see you were using AutoCAD 2016, mm -hmm. you're using Mechanical 2020. Mm -hmm. um, you can download that, students can download that. In some instances, you might have students that have got uh, more up-to-date software than the lecturer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we had this problem before as well. So I've got um, this this um, version 2016 was loaded to my desktop about a year and a half ago. 
um, and I also have 2019 uh, version. I um, talked to uh, Autodesk community and I said, can I update this? So they sent me an email actually this morning. I hadn't, I didn't look at that. So it's like step by step uh, there. So I, I think I can update to the higher version. Yes, but some students, I came across this problem before because sometimes they loaded 2020 and then I couldn't open their uh, drawing. However, yeah. you've got an extension. You've got extension. Um, it's, again, I downloaded it from AutoCAD community. Um, it's um, called uh, update desktop extension. I don't, I don't know. I can I can have a look. And uh, thanks, update. Thanks, yes. update. And you it, it allows you to open uh, the drawings. Doesn't matter when where it was created. So it, you can open it. You can't change it, but you can see it. You can actually yeah. actually see it. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm doing that with SolidWorks. I can't I can't see my SolidWorks software because the license agreement is with the server mm -hmm. on one location. Uh, I have to get a, a copy license, which we, we did do, obviously mm -hmm. due to the, the time constraints. So all, all I can see is a model coming in. I can't see the relationships and everything else associated with the 3D model. Um, mm -hmm. But I'll be interested to find out if you can update your software in AutoCAD from 16 to 20, for example, mm -hmm. without your administration rights. Because your, your students will have 2020 you're delivering on 2016. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, it's not, to be honest, it's not much difference between 2016 and 2020. No. Just a little bit of a different layout and the different uh, tools updated. So yeah, it would be great to have updated version. So I'm working on that. It's still lots of questions needs to be answered here and still lots of improvements needs to be done. I agree, we just uh, we tried our best at the moment. Yeah. moment. <laughs> I think, I think it's working well with uh, our teams that they're, they're coming back in. If they do have issues with the CAD uh, download or they don't feel it's appropriate, we've, we've offered a, a swap out unit within the framework. Um, so we're getting around it that way if there are technical or delivery issues. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the, the key one for me is um, make, make sure the lecturer can actually open up and look at the CAD files sent in uh, and we're working to the same level of, of release software. Not just an AutoCAD, but another engineering software. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, what's the balance from Jason? Um, he's asked, what's the balance between instructor-led and independent learning? Um, and have you had to encourage the students to explore the software and techniques themselves? Yes, 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 I've been doing this as well. Um, again, as you can imagine, if um, it's about 50, 60 students trying to send you emails and trying to ask every single question and how to create every single line, um, I will, first of all, I will refer them. Okay, guys, this is the video I've created for you on Loom, uh, on Loom and this is where you can find it. And also, I would always encourage, uh, guys, actually, you can do research by yourself, uh, look for videos on YouTube. Some of them are really, really useful. You, uh, and it's uh, obviously it's HN level. Sometimes uh, um, they need to be encouraged to uh, work by themselves and do research by themselves. Um, they should be doing it by, uh, at this level at college. <laughs> so, uh, and they're doing fine. And then they will come back to me and say, okay, Svetlana, this is what I found. Is, is, is that how it's done? And, and yeah, of course I will say, yes, this is, this is what's uh, well done for searching yourself and everything. Yep. Um, I find it uh, quite useful for questions to do the research by some, themselves. Perfect. Well, that's us come to the end of um, this session, folks. Um, so thank you very much. That was that was really good. Um, we're going to end the recording there. Um, thank you very much for your attention. For this week. And if anyone wants to stay in chat after, then feel free. So thanks very much, um, everybody. And that was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.